Good afternoon. My name is Monica. I am working as an assistant professor in AC department. Today, I would like to introduce some concepts from electromagnetic fields and waves. Electromagnetic fields and waves. Electromagnetics is a branch of physics where the electric and the magnetic phenomena are studied and the fundamental laws and the relations that govern the electromagnetic fields is studied and the demonstration of such electromagnetic and the demonstration of the fundamental laws and relations in solving the engineering problems is also known. Now, the electromagnetic principles find applications in various disciplines, for example, satellite communication and radars, microwaves and antennas. Now, let us begin our study by defining a scalar and a vector. Because vector analysis is a mathematical tool which helps us to introduce the electromagnetic concepts easily. Scalar. A scalar is a quantity which is characterized by only magnitude and it is denoted using a italic letters. The examples of scalar are mass, time, temperature, etc. Vector. A quantity which is characterized by both magnitude and direction is called as a vector and a vector is denoted by a letter and an arrow on the top of it or simply using a bold letter. Now, the examples of vector are force, acceleration, etc. Now, with these basics, let us define or let us enter into the subject that is EMF, the electromagnetic fields. It is studied as electrostatics, magnetostatics and then we will study the electromagnetic fields. electromagnetic fields. So before starting, first let us define or let us know about what is a field. Consider an electric charge. This electric charge has its effect in the space or region around it. Now, this region is called as a electric field produced by this charge. Now, if the charge is stationary, then when the charge is stationary, then the electric field produced by the stationary charge is time invariant. Time invariant. I repeat, when the charge is stationary, then the electric field produced by stationary charge is time invariant or study. Now, the study of such time invariant or static electric fields is called as electrostatics. The study of such static electric fields produced by static charge distributions is called as a electrostatics. Next, magnetostatics. Scientist Oersted stated that flow of or when the charges are in motion, when the charges are in motion, then they are surrounded by a magnetic field. Then they are surrounded by a magnetic field and we all know that 
the flow of charge will constitute an electric current flow of charge constitute an electric current so based on these two that is when the charges are in motion then they are surrounded by magnetic fields or uh, they produce magnetic field next when the the flow of charge constitute an electric current and based on these two relations we can say that a current carrying conductor current carrying conductor is always surrounded by a magnetic field now if this current is steady current or uh, time invariant current time invariant current then for example time invariant current means dc direct current or if it is also defined as if the charges flow with a uniform velocity with a uniform velocity uniform velocity then the current carrying conductor generate a static magnetic field or time invariant magnetic field time invariant magnetic fields so a current carrying conductor or a steady current carrying conductor generates a steady magnetic fields or time invariant magnetic fields the example of steady current is dc direct current or we can also define as if the charges flow with a uniform velocity in that case also the conductor generates a steady magnetic field or time invariant magnetic fields now the study of such static magnetic fields is called as the study of such static magnetic fields is called as magnetostatics magnetostatics so the study of static electric fields is called as electrostatics and the study of static magnetic fields is called as magnetostatics now what is electromagnetic means if the conductor the conductor carries the conductor carries time varying time varying currents time varying currents generate time varying generates time varying fields or uh, you can also call it as em fields electromagnetic fields or they generate uh, they radiate em waves what are the examples of time varying currents the examples of time varying currents are sine triangular so these are the examples of time varying currents a conductor that carries the time varying current generates the time varying fields or electromagnetic fields or radiates em waves so here the charges flow with a acceleration or an accelerated charge can give rise to a time varying fields so this is the electromagnetic fields now maxwell has maxwell has given four equations we call them as maxwell's equation he has given four equations that govern the electromagnetic fields these four equation governs the electromagnetic fields now the first application the application of the maxwell's equation we call in short form as me the first application of maxwell equation is in relation to the is in relation to the em wave propagation 
electromagnetic wave propagation. So, the examples of electromagnetic waves which we see in our day to day life are examples of EM waves or light rays. TV signals, light rays, TV signals, radar beams, etc. So these are the signals which we see in our electromagnetic waves which we see in our day to day life. So in throughout the EMF, electromagnetic fields and wave subject, we will first study what is electrostatics, then magnetostatics and then electromagnetic fields and the application of electromagnetic fields finds in the electromagnetic wave propagation and the examples of electromagnetic waves are light rays, TV signals, radar beams and etc. Now, with this little introduction about electrostatics, magnetostatics and electromagnetic fields, let us investigate or let us study about the electrostatics in detail and try to establish the relations, Maxwell equations. As already discussed, electrostatics is the study of static electric fields generated by static charge distributions. We begin our study of electrostatics by investigating two basic laws that govern the electrostatic fields. That is, the first one is Coulomb's law and the second one is Gauss's law. Coulomb's law is applicable to any kind of charge distributions whereas Gauss law is applicable to only static charge distributions. First let us study the Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law deals about the force. Coulomb's law deals about the force between or force a point charge exerts another point charge. For this consider two point charges. Let us name it as Q1 and Q2. The distance between these two point charges is given by R. Now, we know that there exists a force between these two point charges. That force can be either force of attraction or force of repulsion based on the polarity of the charges. Now, the force acting between these two charges is given by, or the Coulomb's law states that the force acting between the two point charges Q1 and Q2 acts along the acts along the line joining them line joining them and the force is directly proportional to the directly proportional directly proportional to the product of the charges product of the charges and inversely proportional inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them square of the distance between them so the product is given by q1 q2 and the square of the distance is given by r square now the Coulomb's law, I repeat, the Coulomb's law states that the force F between these two point charges Q1 and Q2 acts along the line joining them and the force is directly proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them and it is given by F proportional to Q1 Q2 by R square. Let us call it as equation number 1. And Coulomb's also stated that the force between these two charges also depends on the medium. The force also depends on the medium in which 
the charges are placed. So, let us introduce the effect of medium into our equation. Now, replace the proportionality constant with the k. F is equal to k into q1 q2 by r square where k is given by 1 by 4 pi epsilon. Epsilon is nothing but permittivity. Permittivity is the ability of the medium to allow the lines of force, electric lines of force to pass through it. And it is given by epsilon is equal to epsilon naught epsilon r. Epsilon naught is the permittivity of the free space and epsilon r is the relative permittivity. Relative permittivity. And the value of relative permittivity for free space is 1. So epsilon r is equal to 1 for free space. Then k is given by simply 1 by 4 by epsilon naught. Substitute the value of k into equation 1. Then we will get f is equal to, so equation 2. And then we will get f is equal to q1 q2 by 4 pi epsilon naught r square. So this is the expression for force between two point charges. Now, as we have already studied that force is a vector quantity. So, let us obtain the vector representation or equation of force in vector form. So, for this, consider the same point charges which are at a distance of or with a position vector R1 from origin R charge Q1 is located at a position vector with a position vector R1 from the origin and Q2 R2 and this is the line joining them and the force on Q2 due to R1 sorry the force on Q2 due to Q1 acts along this line and the force on Q1 due to Q2 is given by this way. And this is R12. Now, the equation F bar is equal to R force on charge 2 due to charge 1. Or Q1 due to... Okay. The force on Q2 due to Q1 is given by Q1, Q2 by... 4 by epsilon naught r square into a r12 where a r12 is the unit vector along the line joining that this is the vector representation of the coulomb's law so coulomb's law gives or deals about the force acting between these two charges and it and it is given by F12 or force on charge 2 due to charge 1 is given by Q1 Q2 by 4 by epsilon naught R square into AR12 and the units are Newtons. So, next let us define the electric field strength. Electric field strength or it is also called as electric field intensity and given by letter E. And electric field strength or called as electric field intensity denoted by E bar. Now the definition of electric field strength is it is defined as force per unit charge. The electric field strength is defined as force per unit charge when placed in a electric field. The force 
per unit charge when placed in a when placed in a electric field and it is given by E is equal to F by Q and the formula is Q by 4 pi epsilon naught R square into AR it is the electric field strength and the units are Newtons per coulomb the units are Newtons per coulomb now this is about the electric field strength now let us define another field vector that is uh, uh, before going to the uh, electric flux density till now we have spoken about only the point charges now it is possible to have it is possible to have charge distributions the various types of charge distributions can be charge distributions or kinds of charge distributions till now we have considered only the point charge this is a point charge now it is possible to have the charge distributions along a line and we will call it as line charge or it is possible to have a charge distribution over a surface area and we will call it as a surface charge distribution We can all, and there is a possibility for the volume charge distribution also. These are the different types of uh, charge distributions. Point charge, line charge distribution, surface charge distribution and uh, volume charge distribution. Volume charge distribution. Now, this is considered the small length dl and the unit surface area ds and the unit volume dv. Now, let us obtain the density and the total charge along the line surface and volume. First, consider the line charge distribution. The line charge density is given by rho L and it is defined as charge per unit length and the total charge total charge along the line is given or calculated by integrating the line charge density integrating the line charge density this gives us the total charge along the line next surface charge. The surface charge density is denoted by rho s and it is given by charge per surface area and the total charge spread over the given surface total charge spread over the given surface is given by integrating the surface charge density or taking surface integral next volume charge volume charge the volume charge density is given by rho v and rho v is equal to charge per volume and the total charge is given by integrating rho v dv over the volume so these are the different kinds of charge distributions and how to calculate the total charge distributed over a line or on a surface or in the volume is given by q is equal to integral rho l dl or total charge in a surface is given by q is equal to integration rho s ds and here as an integration rho v dv so these are the different kinds of charge distributions
point charge, line charge, surface charge and volume charge. So, now, after this, let us define another field vector that is electric flux density. Electric flux density. It is given by D. It's given by D bar. Electric flux density. Now, we know that a uh, charge is surrounded by a charge is surrounded by a electric field. And this electric field is imagined in terms of presence of lines of force. This is imagined as in presence of lines of force around it. Now, these lines of force are called as electric flux lines and it is denoted by psi. The electric flux lines is denoted by psi. And if a charge on the body is equal to plus or minus Q, then the total number of lines, electric flux lines, either originating or terminating on it is also equal to Q. That is given by psi is equal to Q. The total electric flux is equal to the total charge on the body. Now, what is electric flux density? Consider these charges. Now, the electric lines of force are drawn or imagined like presence of lines of force. And now consider a small area, Ds. Now, the electric flux density is defined as the net flux passing through a unit surface area. And it is given by D is equal to net flux passing through a unit surface area or a given surface area. D and the total electric flux is given by integration of D, dS or surface integral of D, dS. Now, let us obtain the relation for D. Imagine, imagine a charge present at the origin of a sphere. Consider a charge which is present at the origin of a sphere. Now, all these are electric flux lines and this is a radius of the sphere and AR is a unit vector along the radius of the sphere. Now, the electric flux density is given by D is equal to psi by S. We know that psi is equal to Q. And the area of the sphere, area of the sphere is given by 4 pi R square. Now, substitute these two values in the electric flux density equation then D is given by Q by 4 pi R square or uh, in terms of vector representation it is given by D bar is equal to 4 pi R square into AR where AR is a unit vector along this one. Now the units for this one are coulombs per meter square. So electric flux density Electric flux density is nothing but the total net flux passing through a unit surface area. What is flux means? The imagine the charge is surrounded by a lines of force and these lines of force is nothing but the electric flux and electric flux psi is equal to Q and the flux density is the Q by 4 by R square.
So we have defined the electric field intensity E, E bar and electric flux density D bar and obtain the equation for E and D. Now we will study the first Maxwell equation. First Maxwell equation. I have already discussed that Maxwell has given four equations which govern the electromagnetic fields. From the four equations, let us study the first Maxwell equation and given by Gauss law. Gauss law forms the first Maxwell equation and the statement of the Gauss law. Gauss law states that the total flux, total flux through Total flux through a closed surface. Total flux through a closed surface is equal to the total charge enclosed by the surface. Enclosed by the surface. Repeat. Gauss law states that the total flux through a closed surface area is equal to the total charge enclosed by that surface and it is given by psi in a closed surface area is equal to Q enclosed by that one. We know that psi in a closed surface area is equal to T surface integral T ds. This symbol indicates that we are talking about a closed surface area. When I say that charge in a charge is enclosed, then you have to consider the volume charge distribution and it is given by Q is equal to volume integral of rho V dV. Now substitute the values of psi and Q, then you will get surface integral D dS is equal to volume integral rho V dV. This forms the first Maxwell equation in integral form. We will call it as Maxwell's first equation in integral form. Next, take the divergence theorem. Divergence theorem. Divergence theorem gives the relation between the surface integral and volume integral and the surface divergence theorem states that surface integral of a vector over a closed surface is equal to the divergence of that vector in volume integral. I repeat, divergence theorem gives the relation between the surface integral and volume integral. The divergence theorem states that surface integral of a vector over a closed surface is equal to the divergence of that vector in a volume integral. Now let us use this one. So surface integral of d ds can be written as divergence of d in volume integral. Now substitute this one in the equation. Then volume integral of divergence of D is equal to volume integral of rho V dV. Then these two can be equated as on both sides of equation we are considering the volume integral. Therefore rho V is equal to divergence of D. This is the representation of Maxwell equation in differential form. Differential form. So Maxwell's first equation in integral form and second first equation in the differential form. This is nothing but the Gauss law. I repeat that Gauss law states that the total flux through a closed surface area is equal to the total charge enclosed by the 
surface and the gauss law is applicable only to the symmetrical charge distributions whereas coulomb's law is applicable to any kind of charge distributions and gauss law finds application in application in calculating the electric field strength and electric flux density of a symmetrical charge distributions in an easy manner so these are the applications of gauss law thank you for watching my lecture